Well, I'm messing up again here some kind of way. Live stream is making some updates and I'm out of date. But I'll catch on. I do know this, Doc is singing for us. In the comment section earlier, I had Janice Wetlow and I wasn't even on yet. My, 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 my. All right, are you out there? All right, well, somebody's coming in here. That's his broad axe. God-fearing, God-loving, word-loving, child of God. Thank you for all your service. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. How good the Lord is. You've been a great, great blessing to us, and I hope the best is yet to come. I want to have the best, best church studio in all Detroit, and I'm depending on you to make it that way. God bless you. God bless you, hardworking deacon. Hardworking deacon. She get them baptized, I tell you. Dr. Richard Royal. Dr. Richard Royal is in the house. Fireball. My preacher, Monica Ingram, who's going to take charge of our colony of fellowships on the Friday before the first Sunday in each month. How good the Lord is. Do it again, Dorothy. Reverend Monica Ingram will be in charge of our services, colony of fellowship, Friday before the first Sunday in each month. Remember that now. Remember that way. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. All right. Look for you. We'll be looking for you. We have the Baptist World Alliance having a leadership meeting there uh, the following week. So everything you can get right, get it right. Including those wires. God bless you. God bless you, Duchess. Brother Frank, so good, so good to have you for a friend, Frank. You have been a friend to me since 1986. And I really believe that you are my friend. You have demonstrated to me that you are indeed my friend. God bless you. God bless you. Count on you, Anthony. I need you, Lord. Sing it, Dorothy. There she is. Thank you, my faithful nurse, my faithful friend, person I can call on anytime. Thank you so much. Thank you for the love that you've given me for oh so so many years. Thank you, Deacon's daughter. Thank you. I'm still begging those nephews of yours to come on back home. I'm still begging them. I don't mind begging them. They're some smart, sharp young men. And I tell them I need them at New Buffalo. They don't need to be where they can just hide in the crowd every Sunday. They need to be exposed and working. I need you, Lord. I need you. I really need you. Listen, why don't you call about five people right now and invite them to the broadcast? We're going to be talking about a very important topic. Should you leave your church? Should you? Well, there's Dr. Dorothy Smith Wilson, great vocalist and songwriter, promoter, tour guide. 
concert leader. I tell you that Dorothy is all that and yet. Thank you, Dorothy. Thank you. Listen, I need you to call five people and tell them to join in that the pastor's going to dare talk about should you leave your church? And God knows I don't need, oh, Lord, I got to stop everything right here, right now. There's Prophet Brenda Daniel. My God, Brenda, my God, I miss you, miss you, miss you, and I'm still missing you. You know, the brother's gotten so quiet. I need you to come and liven it back up. I need you to come and be hollering back at the preacher, shouting out, telling people that's the word. All right? So I'm going to be looking for you, brother. I'll look to hear your voice, how good the Lord is. Bless you. Bless you. Sister Janet Whitlow, you know, this same uh, logo appeared on my screen before I went live. I don't know what was happening. I don't know how you came in before I came on, but it came up. It didn't stay, but it did come up. How good the Lord is. I better check your equipment. Thank you, Brother Devin. Thank you. Let's call out our sick and shut in right now. How good the Lord is. Let me get some glasses here. So hopefully I'll be saying the right thing. All right, we got Gloria Washington. Uh, what a lovely mother she had who served so well in my early years. Sister Gloria Thompson, a lovely, 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 lovely lady with the sweet and gentle smile. Sister Dolores Palmer, who was with me Sunday night, and boy, those of you who were not with me Sunday night, did you miss it? Ooh, book of production and gospel music workshop, uh, mass choir, and uh, Brother La Quentin um, and his group uh, is all I know how to say. And other great, great singers were there, and choirs and soloists with a salute to a missionary, Hattie Humphrey. And I tell you, it really took things up when they showed her on the screen in one of her uh, one-legged dances. I'm telling you, she could do it. She could do it. She could do it. And we're looking for uh, Sister uh, Booker uh, to carry on uh, the work of Mother uh, Missionary Hattie Humphrey and uh, make sure we have uh, the banquet for a birthday and make sure that we have plenty of good gospel concerts. And also her community highlights will be carried on too. We're not going to let it die. Sister Maud Weathers and Sister May Weathers, uh, Brother Ray Nelson, Sister Cecile Giles, and I apologize to you 10,000 times, Cecile. I've been calling you back since Friday night, I think, ain't got there yet, but I'm calling you back. Uh, Sister Helen Keys, Mother Edwina Collins, so sweet. Sister Fanny Tyler, Sister Peggy Tyler, Mother Brown, uh, I think Mother may be Mary Brown, but her husband is Grant Brown. I do know that. He was a dear, dear friend, passed a few years ago. But we're going to salute uh, Sister Brown uh, Mother's Day, uh, along with uh, my other sister Brown out of Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, we're going to salute her. We're going to salute uh, Sister Freddie Smith. Uh, Freddie is 101 years old. If you don't have plans for Mother's Day, make plans to come to New Bethel Mother's Day. Uh, Dr. D.D. Coleman is going to be our speaker. Uh, you will be blessed. Call five people and tell them to join us tonight. Dr. Paul Lowe, uh, Winston-Salem, North Carolina. The Hopper family of Orlando. Uh, the Cowan family of Orlando. The good people of South Carolina. We're praying for you, and I'll be there on the 6th of May. 6th, 7th, and 8th. Uh, Brother Isaac Jenkins. Uh, man who brought me to Alaska uh, many, many years ago. Uh, he's now living in Virginia Beach, Virginia. He changed 
white snow for white sand. Uh, Sister Jean Simmons, uh, who is so sweet, just uh, just born to be kind to people. Sister Myra Cochran, God bless you, who's uh, leading her own ministry now in the San Francisco Bay Area, where I met her in 1989. Sister Paula Williams Gray, a classmate of mine from uh, Western Olin High School is what we called it then. I think they call it Jackson Olin now. Um, but we were there back in 1968. Uh, bless you, bless you, Sister Gray. Brother Benny McGee, the Reverend, I just talked with him Saturday. Brother Joe Stevens, uh, God bless you, Brother Joe Stevens. Uh, thank you for your support and love. Sister Betty Blackman, who just got out of the hospital, but is doing doing fine. Uh, her sister Darlene just went in the hospital. So we got to be praying uh, for uh, the Perkins. Uh, that's my wife's family, large family, six sisters. Um, so somebody's, when we get this old, it's going to be somebody in and out all the time. So keep praying for them. Sister Dorothea Hood, uh, please, please remember uh, her in your prayers. Please remember her in your prayers. Sister uh, Barbara A. Williams and her brother Frank want you to pray for them. Pray for Sister Yolanda Russian, one of our hardworking trustees in New Bethlehem. Pray for Brother Paul Boynton and his wife Kay. Brother Boynton has been in the hospital now. Uh, I would think uh, it might even be three months now. I don't know. A long time, a long time. But his wife uh, serving him so faithful. She's serving him so faithfully. She just, well, she's just right there, just giving all of her physical strength and mental strength. And we got to pray for her that God will continue to pour into her that she might endure. Also, Brother Robert Allen, who's been in and out the hospital. We're praying for you, Robert. Hope you can make it Sunday. Praying for Sister uh, Leela Bond. Hadn't been able to be with us in a great while, uh, but she stays active and keep on keeping on uh, working with the nurses of the church. Uh, we're praying for Sister Monica Ingram and her fine husband. Uh, we're just so glad they're back with us. And Monica going to be carrying on our Cononeo services. Uh, that includes um, a preaching, a uh, lecturer, and a potluck uh, following. That's what Cononeo means, the fellowship. Also, we're praying for uh, my personal friend, Sister Marguerite Johnson. Uh, I'll always love you, Marguerite. Thank you. Thank you. You've been so kind. You've been so kind and so caring. Thank you, Deacon Sears, such a hard worker. Deacon Wetlow, such a hard worker. Both of these ladies are just wonderful. I'm praying for my friend, Dr. Lee Bernard. I haven't talked with him in a week or so. I got to call him uh, to Reverend Johnny Williams. To my friend out in Arizona, uh, Phoenix, Sister Sheila Van Pelt. I was uh, in the gym today and a man was bragging about he's moving to Phoenix in July. A man told him, so well, I'm out there October to February every year. So when you go in July, you might have what they just had. Um, I think he said 110 degrees every day. Uh, for 30 or 60 days. <laughs> so, so Sheila, we're going to see how you feel in July. You might do like Calvin and come on back with us. All right, Sister Cynthia Montgomery, uh, Sister Lisa Mallet Nesbitt, uh, Sister Martha Kelly, Sister Rosa Marvel Williams, two very, very good friends, Sister Kelly and Sister uh, Williams, my God. Uh, Sister Annie Taylor of Bessemer, Sister Betty Nelson of Birmingham, 
Sister Glenda Peterson of Birmingham. Somebody in, in the Birmingham called Sister uh, Glenda and tell her to tune in. Uh, Sister Ruth Davis, one of the finest Sunday school teachers we ever had. She trained the many good teachers from the Buffalo Church. Mother Freddie Smith, uh, Sister Gloria Palmer, Sister Dolores Phillips, our deacon, faithful deacon, Sister Adrena Williams and her father, Robert Williams, Sister Rhonda Archer. Thank you. So glad to see you, Sunday Rock. Rhonda, and I love that smile you had on your face. Keep it up. Sister uh, LaDonna Johnson, bless you. And thank you for the son that you gave to the Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Sister Karis Carr, my personal friend, uh, Brother Avant Carr, who I miss so much. Uh, anytime I pulled up at church, Brother Carr was always there. Uh, when we was having 7 a.m. service, Brother Carr would be the first one there. Sister Cheryl, uh, Dr. Cheryl Perry Moore. God bless you. We miss you. Uh, both of your brothers were there Sunday. Now you've gotten enough rest. Come on. Deacon's daughter, Sister Peggy Close. And then that preacher and preacher, Peggy and Joe Nichols. How good the Lord is. Reverend Dr. Julia Dunn of Brooklyn, New York, and First Man James Dunn, Sister Mary Hunter of Brooklyn, New York, Brother Charlie Stallworth of Bridgeport, Connecticut, and Dr. Tillis Chapman, Brother John Phelps. Missed you, John. I felt so good when you were back on the fifth Sunday. Um, come on back. Come on back. Come on back. Uh, drink that Insure uh, Boost. And uh, come on back. Elena, God bless you and KK. Sister Florence Brooks, who on Saturday will be 97 years old. This is the lady responsible for the first plane ride I ever had in my life. A lady that brought me to Detroit to preach way back in 1968. Sister Catherine Bell, Sister Corey Bowers, uh, Brother John Smith, uh, Sister Shirley Griffith. Shirley, we love you. We love you, Shirley. Rise up and walk. Brother Melvin Early, Brother Robert Perry, Peter Spivey, and Lonnie Bolden. Sister Ethel Adams. God bless you, Ethel. And Sister, uh, yes. Bless you, Sister Beverly Tatnall, um, Warren Rivers, Brother Chris Williams, how good the Lord is, uh, the Long family, uh, Mother McKinnon, her faithful daughter, uh, Laura Lawrence. Thank you, Laura, for your faithfulness. Sister Ernestine Nelson, Sister Pam Jackson, Sister Rosa Cunningham, Brother Philip Smith, who we talked with today, Roberta Hopper, Latrice Bryant, and our usher, Sister Diane Robinson. How good the Lord is. Call somebody, tell them they need <coughs> to join in with us. I'm going to have Dorothy sing one more song for us here, and then we're going to talk about should you leave your church? And maybe that's why I don't have... Um, the members I would like to have now, uh, because I always tell people, serve where you can serve best. Don't be just you, be the best you. And the way to do that is serve where you believe that the preacher is indeed. Thank you, Charlie Richmond. Boy, do you all have a great church. Woo, you talking about a great church. I'm going to have to get Charlie here to tell us about his church. And they do great, great mission work. God bless you, Charlie. And tell your pastor hello. He's a great, great preacher. He calls himself an out-of-the-box preacher because you he demonstrates all of his sermons as well as just, just 
ordinary preaching. He actually, uh, well, the last time he preached in the convention, he literally put himself in a box and he started talking about uh, coming out of the box. Uh, don't just do what you've always been doing the way you've always been doing it. All right, there's a great preacher. I've known him since he was a baby, Brother Charlie Sankey. Uh, his daddy was one of my great mentors in the social ministry. His daddy taught me to walk the street, hug the winos and uh, the people strung out on drugs. I don't know what it was back then, Charlie. It's crack, uh, what we'll be talking about now, but uh, they still was just getting high and out of their minds every day. That ain't nothing new going on. But Charlie didn't let it get to him. He didn't fall a victim of his environment. No, he didn't. He uh, just stuck with the word of the Lord. He and his mother can sing, good God Almighty. They uh, sing us how good the Lord is. God bless you, my preacher, uh, Yasmin. And uh, we're going to have you preaching in our economy of fellowship. I'm going to give uh, Pastor Ingram your uh, number so she can get you to come and be with us on one of those fellowship. Look. All right. Don't forget, Dorothy will be with us on, yes, she'll be with us on uh, the third Sunday in October. Well, call somebody, and I'll be talking about should you leave your church, even if it's New Buffalo Baptist Church on C.L. Franklin Boulevard. My Lord. Mm. God bless you, God bless you, Brother Edwin McCree, God bless you, I know you're on one hour before, thank you, God bless you, God bless you, Brother Terrence Griffith, First African Baptist Church, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, I know you're on right now, all three of us are going to have to come together one Tuesday night. Well, have you got that living water? Yes. Or if y'all dry it out, you got to get some of this living water. Don't go to church complaining about the spirit ain't there. My goodness. God bless you, Sister Nesbitt. God bless you. We love you. God bless you, Wonder. We're praying for Charles. We're going to pray for him right now, matter of fact. Our Father God, you know where, you know the address, you know the very room in the house that Charles is in right now. We want you to move in such a way that he'll know that you are there. 
What he needs to know is of your divine presence. What his wife needs to know is of your divine presence. With your divine presence, we can endure all things. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, friends. All right. How good the Lord is. All right. We want to talk about should you leave your church? Should you? Should you? Should you leave your church? church uh, that's that's the question um there's a fence and you want to tear that fence down but before you tear the fence down have you raised the question why was the fence put there in the first place have you raised the question what would be the consequences of not having the fence. You know, a lot of us, we are quick. We are quick to uh, take action, to do things, spur the moment. Uh, a lot of times we're doing them just to do them. And we have no reason other than, well, sometimes we don't like uh, who was behind it in the first place. Yeah, sometimes we'll be upset about who's behind it in the first place. Uh, we, we, uh, we need to raise the question, before I do this, why is, uh, yeah, why is it that it needs to be done in the first place? Before I do this, what's gonna be the consequences? Yeah, and one of those things that we need to examine, and I'm talking to you, are you at church or in church? Help me now, help me. I'm talking to you. Nobody can answer this for you but you. You see, when you're a Christian, you covenant with the folk that you gather with. You are in a covenant, an agreement with the folk you're gathering with. And, 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 and you are trying to impact their life as they impact your life. But many of us are at church, but not in church, because we don't care about nothing and nobody there. We just come to get whatever it is that make us, yeah, have the fence up. Some of us just need a place to go on Sundays. Some of us just need uh, to meet and greet on Sundays. Some of us just come to church because mama did it. God bless you, great preacher. God bless you. God bless you. We already got Brother Justin's schedule. Uh, in our preaching services. God bless you. Some of us are just at church because uh, that's what we know to do. Should we take the fence down? We need to ask the question. Are you going to church for anything but to go to the church house? My wife often tells a story about a lady who cooked a big roast or ham or something, and she cut the end off every time. So one day, a 13-year-old daughter asked her, so Mama, why do you cut the end of your meat off? She said, because my mother used to do it. She said, why did your mother do it? She said, I don't know. You need to ask her. So when she went to ask her grandmother, she said, Grandmama, uh, why did you cut the uh, hock off the ham or the end of the roast off before you put it in the pot every time? She said, because my mother did it. Of course, she couldn't go and ask that grandmother. She was already going on. But they kept asking around until they found out that the great grandmother was cutting the end of the meat off the roast or the ham because it was too big for the small roaster she had. She never had a roaster large enough. We need to ask ourselves, Am I in church or at church? 
And let me tell you one more time. In church, Justin, means that you are in a covenant relationship. I had Sister Adrena Williams, um, I, I, I call her acting pastor, because she'll do what, whatever she finds to do and think it's going to help. She's going to do it. She's just going to be head over heels in it. And so when we were doing the covenant the other Sunday, it looked like some of the people were slow. Even though we adopted that covenant, I think some 23, 24 years ago, it looked like it would be so easy for everybody. Now I said, I agree. So I had to start running some more off uh, before uh, things start going so bad financially. We used to just keep them out there all the time. But I'm going to tell you, that ink and paper is high. Uh, but I had to do some more, get them out there, the mission statement and the covenant. Because a lot of you are just, yeah, at church, but you're not in church. Now, here's the sad part about it. Should you leave your church? Well, the first answer is yes, because your church is just the gathering place. Your whole, everything about church is just the gathering place. So you come to church and you leave church. You come to church and you leave church. You come to church and you leave church. You leave, yeah. You leave so you can come back. If you don't never leave, you can't come back. And going to church is real important to you. So you leave so that you can do that same thing again, get up and go to church. Uh, one of my young pastors, a man who is our worship leader uh, and coordinator, Brother DeMarco Holly, um, he um, helped us in a seminar with our friends of the new mission. It's a Korean group that meet uh, four times a year around the world. And uh, we keep up as much as we possibly can. One of our members uh, is going to Korea with them in uh, July. If I lose 50 pounds, I'll go. Uh, but if I don't lose 50 pounds, I can't fly that long. Uh, but anyway, uh, the seminar was on why people drop out of church between 18 and 35. And the Marco discovered that one of the reasons they were dropping out of church is because People never took church home with them. You know, mama was a big leader in the choir and shot all over the choir stand. The daddy was a deacon on the deacon board and prayed and served communion real loud and everything. But when they got home, they never raised a hymn. They never read a scripture. And the children never heard them pray. Because church was just a place they went. And they went because... Their mama went. Their grandmama went. So far as they know, their great-grandmama went. They went because it was Sunday. And good folk go to church on Sunday. They at church, but they're not in church. You're not in church. You're not in church. And you're not giving anything. So all that go, you might have known it was about money. It's just what preachers do, beg for money. No more than anything else. You don't have free day at the cleaners. You don't have free day at the grocery store. Man, I sure wish I could run one of them free days at the gas pump. Of all the time, my wife had to get a car that burned premium. Woo. No, why, why, why you want to have free day at the church? God's business got to go on in the same world that the cleaners, the grocery store, and the gas station are in. But you want to come to church and get everything and pay nothing. Then worse than that, Justin, uh, we got some folk in our group, they want to raise money out of the church base, and they ain't giving nothing to nothing. They don't have not an envelope for nothing that they give in, but they want to raise money out of the base, that's the church, for the project that they initiate and dominate. 
They don't, they don't participate in nothing. When the pastor put the calendar out, they don't look in there and find a spot they can work in. They come and say, Pastor, I want to do this. I want to do that. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I want to go, go. But nothing, nothing that connects them to nobody else as church. They are at church, not in church. They're not concerned about the welfare of others. They are just self-promoters. They like promoting themselves. So they only do what will distinguish them from the rest of the people rather than draw them closer to the rest of the people. How good the Lord is. God bless you, minister. God bless you. God bless you. Listen, listen. If you're in the church, it means that you are connected to everybody else and you're concerned about everybody else. And when you leave, church is still with you because you've made certain commitments in your covenant and in your mission statement. You're all about advancing the kingdom of God. Thou kingdom come, thou will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Glory, hallelujah. Are you praying for the kingdom to come and the will be done on earth as it is in heaven? Are you? Are you? Now listen, if you're not growing spiritually out of church, but you are doing your part to connect and ain't nothing happening, yeah, you should leave the church. You, you lose faith in the man or woman these days that God has sent. If you don't believe they are delivering the word, getting to you the word of God, yes. Yes, because you need to be growing, not so much for your sake, but you got to help other people. There are weak, weak people out there that need you to help make them strong. And you can't make them strong if you're not strong, and you're not going to be strong if you're not being fed. You need to be fed the word of God. Listen, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I see we lost some people. Maybe I should have been singing bow down. Uh, but we just can't just shout and try to milk God to help us all the time. You know, that's just what some church is about now. I'm going to church so I can get the things I want because this preacher, he teaches you how to live so you can get what you want. Well, God told me to make disciples. And to be a disciple, it means you got to give up something you got to be disciplined. You got to lay aside something. You got to be told, as I tell members every Sunday, be on time. A lot of people don't go to my church because they get tired of hearing that. Be on time. Don't go out Saturday night with folk who ain't even going to church. Did you hear me? I guess that's why I ain't got no 18 to 40 years old at my church now. But I tell them, you, you can't run with folk Saturday night who's going to be asleep all day Sunday. And you getting up, your clothes and everything, smelling like weed and smoke and, and looking on your breath and stuff and trying to drag on in. Go out Friday night. I ain't never said don't go out. Listen, when me and Miss Milk were young, Oh, we used to get babysitters. Yeah, we used to get babysitters because Friday night is a National Negro holiday. And I, I used to celebrate it. Who would celebrate it now? I'm just too old and tired. Just too old and tired, that's all. Just too old and tired. But not Saturday night. Anything that's going hinder, to hinder me from being my best you need to take God a rested body. 
That's why some of you don't like church. You're tired when you get there. And then when it looks Sister Jenkins like the preacher going to preach 45 minutes, oh, Lord, now we're really upset. Really upset. Listen, God bless you. And listen, I, I really want 100 people to be with us in the morning. And can't nobody make that happen but you. You're the only one. You're the only ones that can make it happen. That we have 100 people praying together in the morning. Now, if you think we don't need it, Israel said again today, we will retaliate against Iran. If you don't know, that's the big oil seller. So if they get hit, your gas, I, I paid $4.45 a gallon yesterday. But when Israel hit Iran, according to what they hit, especially if it stops oil production, especially if other countries join in, then we're going to be paying 12 and $15 per gallon. And God knows we can't afford it at New Bethel. We can't afford it at New Bethel. I'm sure some churches got members that can pay $50 a gallon and wouldn't miss it. But that ain't, that ain't New Bethel. Many of our sheep are from the uh, least, the lost, the marginalized. We seek to get those in the crack out of the crack. Uh, my, 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 my. Well, we're praying. We're praying. But listen, try to be with me in the morning, 5 a.m. Um, you can get 100 people there. Jesus only had 12 disciples, and one was a devil. The other was a denier. The other was a doubter. And the other one <coughs> just flat ignorant of who Jesus was. But it turned the world upside down. You and I together can bring thousands of people to Christ by joining together in prayer. I know we like to think if we have the best choir, we're going to have the most people. I, I have a son uh, who's preaching, and he's one of the best, and um, they got uh, 17 locations, I think it is, 40,000 members. And people always say, he gets all the best singers, Reverend Smith. You got to get the best singers. That ain't true. James Cleveland and Al Green and these guys would have had really, really big overflowing churches. You know, only God adds to the church as he see fit. Only God. <coughs> only God. It ain't the preaching. It ain't the singing. It is God, the scriptures say, who adds to the church. And this is what he told you to do. Pray he to the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth labors to his vineyard. So I want you to be praying tonight that God will help us uh, to have a hundred in the morning. Join me in the morning, 5 a.m. from wherever you are. God bless you. I love you. <coughs> in the morning, 5 a.m. 5 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> well, if you want the Lord to help you, by down. I think i say it one more time here. Bye. Bye. Bye.
don't sound right. Oh, do you mean that said if my people would call by my name, they would just humble themselves and pray. Turn from their wicked way and seek my favor. Then will I hear from heaven. Sin, will I forgive their sin? Oh, sin, sin will I heal their land? Somebody here, somebody here tonight, God in His word and believe His word. When He said, I said, in my name. And it shall be given. Somebody, somebody heard him. When he said, Seek, and he shall find. Knock, and the door will be open. Somebody believe him tonight. When he said, All things are possible if you only believe. That's what I want to tell you tonight. Bye.